This video demonstrates production methods for sectioning individual otoliths and shark vertebrae on an isomet diamond wafering blade saw. This process takes approximately five minutes and will produce thin sections of otoliths which will be used for age determination. We use a Bueller isomet low speed saw with a diamond edge wafering blade to make sections through embedded otoliths. The saw is assembled by placing the large black cylinder with o-ring on the cutting armature followed by the blade keeper, the large round silver disc. Next we install the blades. Spacers are used between the blades to determine the thickness of your final section. The spacers are mostly made from scrap plastic of varying thicknesses, cut from thin sheets of brass or old blades, and the spacers thickness can be measured with a set of calipers. For preparing otolith sections for age determination, we typically set the spacers to 0.6 millimeters. If you are preparing sections for bomb radiocarbon samples, set the spacers thickness to one millimeter. Once the blades and spacers are installed, add another blade keeper, then the small black cylinder and retaining nut and tighten with a wrench. Multiple blades can be added to the saw to cut up to three sections at a time, but typically only two blades are used to make two cuts at once. This produces one section through the sample in a single cut and reduces the chances of breaking the section, as can happen when making sequential cuts with a single blade. It is also much faster, especially when you have a number of samples to process. Fill the reservoir with a 60 to 40 percent glycerin to water mixture until it covers the lowermost centimeter of the blade once the well is in position. A solution of a small amount of dish detergent and water can be used in place of the glycerol. Glycerin acts as a lubricant to help the blade cut through the sample. Individual otoliths are typically embedded in epoxy first. Preparations for embedding otoliths in epoxy molds will be described in a separate video individual embedding of otoliths in epoxy molds. The epoxy provides support around the otolith while cutting and makes the, them easier to clamp in the chuck. Place the embedded otolith in the single chuck, tighten with an allen key and attach it to the cutting arm with the, facing, with the screws facing down. Insert retaining screw to secure the chuck to the cutting arm. Set the angle of the chuck so that the sample will lie almost flat against the surface of the blades. Align the marked core on the otolith so that it is in the center of the blades using the silver adjusting knob on the right. The, otol the otolith has to be aligned as close to perpendicular of the blade as possible. Don't cut on an angle. Start the saw with arm in the raised position and adjust the speed for cutting. We typically cut between speed 5 and 8. Next, add a sufficient amount of weight to the cutting arm. It is better to start with no weight and work up with familiarity especially if the section is breaking. If too much weight is added, it can cut through the sample too quickly and can even cause the blades to splay outward and warp. Gently bring the cutting arm down until the sample makes contact with the turning blades. If the saw stops for some reason before the cut is finished, check the height of the safety switch. Be sure to remain with the saw while it is cutting in case there are any problems. If the sample breaks or if there's a jam, it could damage the saw or the blades. When the saw is almost finished cutting, slow the speed down to about three and turn off the saw just before the blades finish cutting through the sample. If need be, you can finish the cut with a scalpel. Another option is to use the automatic stopping device located on the cutting arm of the saw. This can be positioned to stop the saw just before the saw cuts completely through the sample. Adjust the screw on the arm so that it depresses the stop switch when the blade has just barely finished cutting through the sample or nearly through. Okay. Sometimes the cut sample disappears after the cut is made. If you can't locate the section once you have made the cut, it is probably stuck between the blades or it has fallen into the reservoir. Open the reservoir and remove the screen to locate the section.
If you would like to check the correct thickness of your sample beforehand, this can be done by making a test cut on a blank mold first to make sure each of the sections are the appropriate thickness. This can be done before you cut your samples by making a test cut on a blank mold first to make sure each of these sections are the appropriate thickness. Use the same procedures for cutting as previously mentioned, only this time use a blank mold for your cut and measure the thickness of the section with a pair of calipers once the cut is complete. If the thickness is off, you may have to disassemble the saw and add or subtract some of the spacers. Once you are happy with the thickness of the sections, move to your actual sample. Sections can be stored dry and don't need to be mounted on a slide. If desired, they can be glued to the slide with a little epoxy or crazy glue. Label the section using the diamond tip pen and keep all pieces stored in a suitable labeled envelope or container. To cut unembedded otoliths, a similar procedure to what has already been demonstrated is used, except that we use a single blade and a different chuck to hold the otolith. A piece of plasticine is placed on the chuck and a whole otolith is pressed into the plasticine. A mark can be made on the plasticine by gently bringing the cutting arm down to the blade which will help you align the otolith properly. Normally, otoliths should be cut with an epoxy mold, since the otolith can shift in the plasticine. Make sure to remember to line up the marked core of the otolith so that it is in the center of the blade as described previously. Take care to align the otolith as close to perpendicular of the blade as possible and don't cut on an angle. When ready, simply cut the otolith as before. Because this is a single blade and the otolith is not embedded, it will cut through the otolith very quickly. Listen for the change in the sound as the saw is cutting and be sure to stop the saw before the blade damages the chuck. After the first cut is made, use the silver adjusting knob on the right and move the saw arm to make another cut. This adjusting knob is a micrometer, so you should be able to dial the correct thickness of the section you wish to take. Repeat the cut carefully as there is an increased chance of breaking the section when cutting this way. Once cut, the section rate may remain secured in the plasticine or it may fall into the reservoir. Collect the section and store it in a suitable labeled envelope or container. Shark vertebra can also be sectioned on the isomet saw. When cutting shark vertebra, the whole vertebra is used after it has been cleaned of any surrounding tissue and the top of the hemal arch is removed to allow removal of the spinal cord. The calcified centra is then sectioned through the center of the centrum, either using the single or double chuck. We also use a custom larger double chuck for larger vertebra. When using the double chuck, make sure the center of the centrum is in line with the groove of the chuck. The cut is made perpendicular to both the centrum face and the hemal arch, and we generally use a 0.6 millimeter spacer to prepare a thin section with one cut. You may have to use smaller blade keepers as the double chuck will often interfere with the larger ones when cutting. When the cut is complete, you should have a bow tie shaped section. The section may break in the middle, but you can put it back together when imaging. The vertebrae is now ready for image analysis and identification of growth rings.